Welcome. This is Around the Table Yarns. I'm Beth Billings, and tonight we're doing Sock Club. It's the last one of 2022, and we're doing my friend Olga's No Sweat Shorties. So Olga Olak is the designer of this pattern, and she is a completely obsessed sock knitter. She's taken lots of sock classes, and she really loves socks that fit well. Um, I made this pair uh, right around the time that she designed them in 2019, and they're my favorite pair of short socks. So I thought this was a fun one to do. We did do a Christmas stocking this year. I thought this was a great one to do for the last two months before the holidays, because it's just possible to finish these before, uh, you know, in time to give them <laughs> <laughs> away to somebody. So the name of the pattern on Ravelry is No Sweat Shorties. And I think it, it's not very expensive. I think it's like four or five dollars mm -hmm. for the pattern. And um, again, it is a for purchase pattern. So we're not going to reveal all of the details of the pattern on the video tonight. But we are going to talk our way through it. So hello and welcome. <laughs> Um, there are a number of features of this pattern. I just want to talk very briefly and point out some things as we get started. This is a pattern that begins at the, at the cuff. And you'll see that there is a line in this photo that comes down. This is a ribbing section and it is sided. In other words, there is a left sock and a right sock. And the big difference between them is the position of this ribbing section, okay? So when we do the socks, if you do the socks two at a time, I would recommend that you start, I'm gonna mute whoever's not muted. There we go. If you need to ask a question, please feel free to. I just muted everybody. Um, if you need to ask a question, just unmute yourself and ask your question, but it's hard to, it can be hard if there's background noise. Um, okay, so the this ribbed section is different for each of the two socks, but every other instruction is the same. So you set up the ribbed section and then you continue following the little pattern for that the whole way down until you get to the toe shaping. So I just wanted to point that out. Um, I will be casting, I cast on, and I will be starting the, um, the left sock. I've already done the beginning of the right sock so that I can demonstrate what's further along. So I'll be demonstrating this part of the pattern shortly. And the other thing I wanna point out is that this sock can have a striped heel or a plain heel, and it's up to you. Um, it has stripes right after you finish picking up the gusset stitches. So as you're beginning the gusset shaping here, um, you and you're working in the round again, there is a, a couple of single stripes there, and there are a couple of stripes before you get to the toe shaping. And the placement of stripes is completely optional. So the pattern only tells you to use the contrast color on the cuff. It doesn't tell you to use it everywhere else. So you get to decide if you want to have a striped heel or a solid heel, if you want to have these racing stripes, if you want them in the middle, if you want them to run the whole length. So here's a thing. I'm only using this much yarn. And if you wanted to, you could use less of the main color by using more of a contrast color. So if you've only got a little bit of yarn, the pattern says if you have 50 or 60 grams, which is like half of a skein of sock yarn, half of a full skein of sock yarn. So if you only have 50 or 60 grams, or maybe you have a little bit under 50, you could extend how much you use the stripes to eke out a little bit more from your main color. So I thought this was also a nice pattern because it lets you use up scraps of yarn. So if you had 
you know, she says 50 or 60 of the main color, 50 or 60 grams of the main color and five to 10 grams of the contrast color. So if you had some other combination, you could work it out so that you, you could get a whole pair out of small amounts of sock yarn. Okay. Any questions before we get started? Did everybody, was everybody able to print out a copy or has a copy of the pattern? Good, I'm seeing nodding. All right, so I've started. I am going to be demonstrating, unfortunately for Liz on magic loops, but I do, I was working with Alfreda this morning who was doing it on DPN. So I do have some cautions for the DPN users, particularly when we get to the, um, the working the heel and I just want to yes in my handy compartment I got new small markers which I really love and um, they're very smooth they're metal they're not plastic and they don't they're not very wide and they come in bright colors and they pick up with a magnet I'm just going to get a couple of markers out because once I start in the round, I'm going to need it. So I'm ready to, I'm doing the medium size and I'm ready to join in the round and start the first row. So I'm on page three of the pattern for those who are following along and I've cast on enough for the medium size. Sorry, I'm just getting these organized on my needles. And I've divided them in half and brought the cable through at the halfway point. My working yarn is attached to the last stitch that I cast on, which is on the rear needle. So I think of the near needle being the one that's closest to my body this way and the far needle or the rear needle is the one that's further away from me. So that's this needle. And the working yarn is attached. Here's my tail. Here's my working yarn. My first stitch is going to be a purl stitch. So I actually want the working yarn to come towards me and not, I if it's a, a knit stitch, I usually put it over that needle, but because it's a purl stitch, I'm gonna bring it under the first, the front needle. So I'm gonna remove the back needle. I'm holding the two edges close, just like you would start anything in the round. You want the, the last stitch and the first stitch to be near each other. And I'm gonna go purlwise into that first stitch. And I'm gonna move my yarn so I'm not wrapping it around the cable. What just did? I want to move in there and wrap the yarn around. So that's my first stitch is a purl stitch. And some people do an extra stitch and they, you know, they slip it over and work two together. I just pull super tight on the first one. And I find that that's usually enough to close it up. All right, I am using instructions for the left sock. So I'm going to follow the middle instructions for the left sock and purl over to where I'm gonna place these two markers and do my ribbing. So uh, I do recommend that you start with one or the other sock. I don't really mind which one you start with. I'm not calling out numbers just because of the copyright concerns. I would have already placed the markers if I were doing the right sock. But this, this um, ribbing is on the other side of the top of the foot.
Okay, there we go. So I've knit the number of stitches for placing the first marker, and then I'm going to purl one. And this is a twisted rib, so I'm gonna move the yarn to the back, and I'm going to knit in the back of this stitch. So I'm not knitting into the front leg as we normally do. I'm taking my needle and running it into the back leg of the stitch to create a twisted stitch. I'm gonna purl one, knit into the back loop, KTBL, three times. Here's my second time. Purl one, knit TBL, and then purl one more. So there's a total of seven stitches in this section between the markers. And I'm gonna continue purling until I get back to the beginning of the round. On my other sock, you can see that that section is on the other side. So, okay. So that's the first step is the placement of the markers. All right, so I've finished the first round. I'm back to the beginning. And this section of the sock is done in garter stitch. So that's why the first row was purled. And now the second row will be knitted. Um, and that's because we're working garter stitch in the round for our socks. So in the second round, I'm going to do the setup for, I'm sorry, I'm gonna start the short rows, which create the back of the heel. So again, I'm gonna demonstrate with the one I've done earlier, that little setup is this shape and it's the back half of the socks. And we're gonna use German short rows, which are my favorite. And they make a very smooth, you don't have to do very much to resolve the German short row. You just have to knit the, um, you just have to knit the double, what's called a double stitch. So I'm going to go over this with you step by step, but it makes a very nice bulge in the top of the cuff. And this is the bulge that's at the back here where the heel is. So I'm going to walk through that whole thing with you step by step. So first I'm working across. This row is knitted. And so I think the reason she started with a purl row, I mean, usually I would think you might have started with a knit row, but because the Short row section is done in the second row. I think it was smart that she started with a purl row and now we're moving to a knit row. So I am going to be following in the middle of page three. My dog is pulling bones off of things to chew on because he's teething. So if you hear a funny noise in the background, that's a puppy. I'm doing the middle size. I'm starting with round two, the short row round for both socks. And I'm at line one, right side, and I'm gonna knit the number for the middle size, which is in the, almost the end of my second side. So I'm gonna get to that point and I'm gonna turn the work. So I'll turn off the camera while I do that knitting. Remember as you work this round, when you come to the markers every time, you always do the same thing. You slip the marker, purl one, knit through the back loop, repeat three times total, and then one more purl one. and then slip the last marker and resume knitting around.
So I've on my magic loop, I have come to the second half of my stitches. So I'm in the second round, the knit round. I have worked all of the stitches on the first needle and the remainder of the stitches across here. The number left should be the number of stitches you cast on minus the number of stitches that you are supposed to work to get to the turning point. So for me, that number is 13. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. I'm in the right place. So check your pattern for how many stitches you cast on and how many stitches you're supposed to work to the turn. Subtract the one from the other and count your stitches. Make sure you're in the right place to make your turn. The German short row is very straightforward and it was really, it's really perfect for garter stitch. It is done like this. You work to the point where you want to make your turn. So we're there. We turn our work in our hands. The yarn is automatically in front if you were knitting before, and that's where you want it to be to do a German short row. So I'm going to slip the first stitch, the stitch that the yarn is attached to, I'm gonna slip it purlwise from the left needle to the right needle. And at the same time, I'm going to lift up the working yarn and carry it over to the back of the needle. That is the whole thing. There's no wrap, there's no slip it over here, slip it back over there. It's just slip one stitch and lift the yarn up. And what I want you to notice is when I do that, it doubles the legs of the stitch that's on the end of your right needle. So it's called making a double stitch, not a shadow stitch, that's a different thing. It's a double stitch. So in the pattern, she refers to it as MDS, make double stitch. This is the point where you make the short row. So make double stitch, if you wanted to write it down, it would be slip the next stitch purlwise and lift the working yarn from the front to the back over the top of the needle. Okay, and then you knit the next number, which for everybody is five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's my first short row. Now I'm going to turn again. Now when I turn, because my, whether you're using double points or magic loop, this can get a little fiddly. I always hold my yarn off to the right where the, the skein is. I hold it there and I turn it so it doesn't get twisted in the yarn. I just recommend that because I found that I spend most of my time untangling things. All right, so now this is the stitch that we're going to make double stitch. It's the first one on the left needle. So again, slip that stitch purlwise and lift the, the working yarn to create two legs and take it to the back of the work so that you can knit. In this case, this is number two under the short row section, two wrong side, make double stitch, we just did it. And then we're gonna knit one, two, three, four. Sorry. I'm sorry, this is the right side. This is three. The first turn was number two. So two was here, that was on the wrong side. And we came over here, this is our third line of the, of the short row section. We've made a double stitch and now we're gonna knit six. So here's my double stitch. Here's my first stitch that I knitted. One, two, three, four. Notice what my second to last stitch is. It's the double stitch. So you work that as though it were a normal stitch. You work it as one leg. So you just knit the two legs of the double stitch together and that resolves the double stitch. And then you have to make one more because each row we're gonna go past our double stitch by one. 
So that was row number three. Turn, make a double stitch, and then knit seven. One, two, three, four, five. Here it is again. Second to last stitch is the double stitch again. So we're going to resolve the double stitch by knitting both legs together. So both of the front legs are going to be worked together. Six, seven, turn. I am now on short row line five. It's a right side row. Double check that you're keeping track. The right side row should line up with all of the stitches having on the right having being a knit stitch. And that is the case. So if I pull down that yarn, you can see that there is clearly a knit stitch on my right hand side. So I'm on row five, right side, make double stitch and then knit eight. So when I pull this up, it's just coming to the back and I just make my next stitch with it. I'm not doing anything extra. Here's my seventh stitch. Again, that is a double stitch that I resolve by working both legs together. And I'm in stitch number eight. Now I'm on line six. Make a double stitch. One, and we're gonna knit nine. Two, three, Seven. My eight stitch is my double stitch again. Eight, nine. Turn back. I'm back on a right side row. This is row seven. I only have seven, eight, and nine to go. It is really important, I think, to do short rows in one sitting. It's usually fast if you sit down and pay attention to them. If you stop in the middle of them, it's crazy making. So here I am on row seven, make a double stitch and knit 10. If you lose your, if you lose track, you can count and see how many stitches it is to the next short row, to the next double stitch, because the double stitch is always the second to the last stitch. So here I am eight. Nine is my double stitch. And then you would work one more 10. That would be one way for me to know that I was on row seven. So let me just show you how that works. Here I am, I've forgotten what I'm doing. Oh wait, hmm, what is it? Well, this is the beginning of my round over here. So I'm on a wrong side row and Here's my doubles. I know that's gonna be my double stitch. So count to the next double stitch and I'll be able to tell where I am. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that one is the double stitch there. That's got the two legs. So the 10th one, so I'm gonna knit one more, that's 11. So I can look back and see that that's row eight. So again, slip, pull up, and knit your 11. So we're almost to the end of this. Now I talked to Olga about this pattern. I told her that I was gonna be doing this pattern with you all, and she was really excited. And she said that she had um, made some alterations on it, particularly here. If you like a higher back of your heel, she said to go ahead and do a couple more short rows past, you know, so just add one more and do a row nine and then a 10, 11, if you want it just to be two rows higher or 10, 11, 12, 13, if you want it to be four rows higher, but it needs to be, it needs to end on an odd number. Okay. Cause you have to be going back in the correct direction. Okay, so this is gonna be my last 
short row number nine. And I'm going to slip the stitch, knit to the beginning of the round, which for me is the end of this side. So when I come to, so I've left a, I've left a double stitch here. And one thing I would, I would say is you could mark that stitch so that you know when you're coming back to it to knit the two legs together, but it will feel weird when you come back to it. So I haven't been leaving a marker. I've just been waiting till I hit the weird part and knitting the two legs together. So here's the last double stitch coming up on this side. And then I have the one that I made over here that I'm gonna have to come back to. So you finish to the beginning of the round. And then we're going to start round three, which is listed at the bottom of the short row round, and it just says purl. All and maintain the, the ribbing section between your markers. Anybody have a question about that so far? I do. Yes. So if you, I did, I, I was, I'm on the call because I wanted to know how to make, because they did turn out shallow. Do you have to make an even amount of new short rows? So if you want to add short rows, um, if you want one more pair, mm -hmm. you would oh, add a row 10 and 11. Okay. And if you want two more pairs of short rows, it would be 10, 11, 12, and 13. So you have to do them in that's what I didn't get. Okay. You have to do them in pairs so that when Thank you turn, I'm now ready to purl the next row. So I'm on my next garter stitch row of the cuff. Okay. So I'm going to pause there on this one because I just have to work in garter stitch to finish this section. So I will purl around and then I will knit around and then I will purl around and I will knit around and I'll do that one more time for both. And I'll have four garter ridge ridges in my cuff, not in the short row section, just in the, the plain part of the cuff. And my little ribbed area will be growing. So let me show you, I could feel like Julia Child. Let me show you the one I had from earlier. What happens to the ribbed section is that it makes its own little bump, which I find very handy for pulling my socks on. <laughs> so I like it. Um, so it makes its own little bump and you just continue this all the way down the, the foot. I've got my four ridges of, of the cuff, one, two, three, four here. And then I did not cut my contrast color. I just simply at the beginning of the next row after I finished the cuff, I began knitting with my main color, which is this green. And I worked two rounds of knit because you're back in stockinette now. So only changing when you're between the markers to follow the in between the marker pattern. And I worked two rounds of stockinette and you can see that at the base of my stitches here. Okay. And then the pattern says, so I'm at the almost the bottom of page three, where it says join main color and knit two rounds. And then she's got two asterisks. And below that, it says heel flap. So if I finish a round, I finish it here. 
at the end of my round. So wherever your beginning of round is, when you finish, you're about to start a new round, right? In the pattern, she writes, heel flap is worked on the previous half of your stitches. So this tripped up at least two people this morning, and I want to be as clear as I can be. The previous stitches are not these, they're the ones on the back. So we're gonna make our heel flap on the stitches that you would have to turn and purl back on, okay? The pattern is not written for a reinforced heel. The heel is done only in stockinette. I did choose to stripe mine. So here's what that looks like. It has a garter ridge edge. So many of you have done socks where we do a slip stitch and a reinforced like slip a, knit a stitch, slip a stitch when we're doing the heel flap. And then we have to remember that we slipped a stitch or we have to remember to slip the stitch at the beginning. And sometimes we don't. And so then when you go to pick up your stitches later, it's kind of a nightmare. I don't know if that's ever happened to you. It's happened to me. So what I like about this pattern is when you're doing your heel flap, one, I alternated my colors. That makes the ridges two color on the sides. But if I stretch this out, it's really clear to see between the ridges. And you're gonna pick up one stitch between each garter ridge. So you don't have to think about slipping a stitch at the beginning of the row. You don't have to slip any stitches. It's just stockinette. And it's really, really clear where we're gonna pick up. So I just wanted to share that with you because I thought it was really helpful. For those of you using DPNs, when you turn to work back on the half of the stitches, do them on one single DPN. So Elfrida likes to divide things by three. Some people like to divide things by four. However you do it, just do the heel flap on a single DPN. So you will redistribute and reposition your double pointed needles. I think it makes it much faster and simpler to do than if you have to keep changing needles in the middle of the flap. So you get to the end of the round. Sorry. You get to the end of this round and then you turn and with the contrast color, which was sitting here waiting because we didn't cut it, you just draw it up and knit four purl, knit four, and then you turn it, knit all the way back. And then you turn it and the main color is sitting there waiting for you. And so you just keep doing that two rows. So a row there, a purl row, and then a row back, a knit row, until you complete all of the ridges that you need. In the pattern, Olga recommends that if you have trouble with your socks slipping down, you could do a couple of extra rows here. So that's another place you can add a little bit of space to if you have trouble with your heel flaps being too short. So some people just have bigger heels and they know, they know who they are. <laughs> so I did on, um, I'm making a pair for my husband and I did do a couple of extra rows here to give him a little bit more space in his heel flap because he's got big fat heels. Okay, so now we're gonna do the heel turn. And the heel turn is the same for everybody. And it begins with the right side row. So, So that means I need to work back with my main color, <laughs> all tangled. I've been turning it around and turning it around. So I'm gonna work back over with my main color, which is the green. And I'm just gonna knit four 
and then purl the middle and then knit four at the other end. So I'm getting to my last, this is my last wrong side row and I'm getting to my next right side row. You can't see it, but my small dog has just put all his paws on me and he's asking to go out. So I'm gonna pause the video when I get to the end and I will come right back, but I can't afford to break his house training. <laughs> Getting to the very end of that row, I revert to the knit stitch when I have four stitches left. Knit, 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 knit. And now I'm gonna be ready to do my heel turn and I'm gonna do that in the main color. So one second, I'll be right back. All right, so we're ready to do the heel turn now. I'm on a right side row, I'm using my main color. Again, we're only working back and forth when we do the heel turn. We're not ready to join back into the round yet. So to make the heel turn, what we're doing is this little section here, and it's the point in the sock, it's the exciting point of the sock. It's the point where we turn a 90 degree angle and start start getting back to working in the round. And the way that that's done is again with short rows. So these short rows are not German short rows, they're regular short rows. Um, and they're done without any kind of wrap and turn or any kind of closure of the gap. And the reason is when you do your heel turn, the gap is what tells you where to do a decrease. So first we have to set it up. So I'm doing the middle size. So I'm gonna knit across a certain number of stitches. And then after that number is complete, I'm going to SSK and knit one and turn. So here we go. Okay, so there's my last one of my plain knit stitches. To SSK, I slip a stitch as though to knit, slip a second stitch as though to knit, put the left tip of my needle, left needle tip into the fronts of those two stitches, and then work them together around the back. And that angles the decrease to the left. And then I knit one more stitch. When you turn and you don't wrap and turn or do a German short row, so I'm not pulling this up and over, this working yarn is gonna immediately reverse direction and go back this way, because I'm gonna knit this stitch and it causes a gap to form between this stitch, the one on the needle and the one next to it. So I'm gonna purl. I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna slip one. So we slip that stitch, but we don't take the yarn behind. We just slip it with the yarn in front and we're gonna purl seven. One, two, three, four, at this point I should be I should have equal numbers of stitches on each side. So when I finish my maneuver here, I'll have the same number of stitches on the back. So I've, I've purled the seven, I purl two together, that's the next decrease. 
and I purl one more. I have 10 stitches on this side and 10 stitches on this side. So I've centered my heel turn in the middle. So you turn again, slip the stitch purl wise, and then you're gonna work to the gap, to one stitch before the gap. So if you look at your left side of the needle, it's very easy to see the gap. One, the color change in the stripe is very evident. So because I striped this and I'm doing it after a contrast stripe, you can see that I have several colors here. So it becomes really simple to see what you're doing. So I do recommend checking to make sure you've centered your heel turn before you keep going with it. Because if you haven't centered it, you'll be sad when you get to the end. So we're going to work over knitwise to the gap. And when we get to the gap, we're going to slip the stitch before the gap, knitwise onto the right needle, slip the stitch after the gap, work them together as an SSK, knit one more stitch. That takes two stitches away from my end. And then I'm gonna slip that stitch, purl to the gap, purl to one, sorry, one stitch before the gap. Like working short rows, doing a heel turn is only a few rows of stitches and I highly recommend doing them all at once. There was my purl two together, there's my purl one. I have the same number of stitches remaining. All right, slip a stitch knit or purl wise, work to the gap and SSK. We're gonna do this until we get to the end of our heel stitches. And if all goes well, We'll run out right at the end where we're supposed to. SSK and knit one. So I'll I'll come back when I've got the rest of the heel turn done. So I'm resuming on my last purl round, purl row, sorry, of the heel turn and so I'm going to come to the end of my heel turn here. I've slipped the first one purl wise and now I'm purling across to the gap. So there's my purl two together and my last purl one. Now I turn and I've completed my heel turn. And you can see how nice it looks. It's a little trapezoid. And that's the, that's the point that changes the direction of your knitting. Okay, so we've come to the end of the heel turn. You're ready to knit a right side row and you are going to resume knitting in the round. So, so, knit across the heel stitches Make sure as you go across them that you have the correct number. Mm 
Okay. Or near. So now I'm at the garter edge of my heel flap. My working yarn is attached to my needle on the right hand side. And I have all of these garter ridges to guide me from one end to the other. And that's what I really like about this. I found this pickup so straightforward. Now I like extra stitches in my in my gusset pickup because I just find it is far less holy and they last better if you do more stitches than fewer stitches. So I'm gonna go as close to here as I can. I'm gonna go before the first garter ridge. So I'm just diving in, I'm two strands. So one full stitch in from the edge and I'm going sort of in between, you can see this contrast pearl bump right there. I'm going in between that pearl bump and this one where the two strands come together. And I'm picking up a stitch by putting my working needle in there from front to back, wrapping around the back of it, and then pulling that new stitch through. My next garter ridge is here. It looks like a big space, but I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put my needle in in the same place. So again, two stitches from the edge or two, a stitch from the edge, two legs from the edge, and then pull it through. This pearl ridge is kind of squished together because it's where we brought up the yarn. And I'm just gonna pick up one stitch now in every little garter valley. Find it. All the way up. And sometimes those valleys will be close together and sometimes they'll be a little further together, further apart. But I'm going to try and pick up my stitch in the same place in the valley every time. So it looks a little bit like that. And you do it right up to the top of the sock. So one of the things I like about double or about Magic Loop is that it allows you to do half the socks on one half of the needle and half of the sock on the other. Um, if you are doing double points, you will have a lot more stitches on at this point because it's the most stitches that are on for the whole sock when you do the gusset pickup. So you'll have to redistribute the the needles. Um, potentially, you can have one that goes from the center to here. So that would be needle one. Needle two would be across the front stitches, and then needle three would come down the other side to the center of the heel. She has the beginning of the rounds starting at the, the top of the foot. So when you get to the top of the gusset, sorry, when you get, yes, when you get to the top of the gusset, you're gonna pick up one more stitch in the last valley. And then she recommends picking up an extra stitch or two at the top. So you can decide if you think that you'd have room for an extra stitch or two. I'm gonna pick up two. So there's my pickup. So I find it really easy <laughs> to do it with the garter ridges. The garter ridges just seem very um, clear and with good light, you can see them and do it. I sometimes have trouble because some, some of my students forget to do their slip stitches at the beginning of the gus or the heel flap. And so then they end up with not a clear place to pick up stitches from. Okay, so I'm going to reposition my needles here at the beginning of the top of the foot. And how do I know it's the top of the foot? It's got that ribbed pattern on it. 
So I'm gonna slide my left-hand needle into position. We haven't done it for a while, but now we will again work in stockinette. So I'm knitting until I get to the markers. And then I will do the purl one, knit TBL. Purl one, knit TBL, purl one, knit TBL, purl one for those seven stitches. And then I'm gonna knit to the other side and again, reposition my needles. So if you're doing double points, this would be on one needle, half of your stitches, and then half of each of the gusset sides would be on another two needles. Am I saying that clearly, Liz? Does that make sense to you? Okay. So here I am coming to the end of that side. And again, this will be a point where I would change needles if I were doing double points. <laughs> In this case, I'm going to reposition. I don't have to move this needle into position because I'm going to be picking up stitches, but I should get ready to knit off of the end of it. So I'm just pulling my loop a little bit longer. All right, so take this needle out or join your new needle. I picked up two stitches in this area on the other side. So I'm going to do the same again. And I'm not doing anything really uh, calculated here, I'm just sort of eyeballing like between this stitch and this stitch, this looks like one. And then another stitch width away looks like two. So this is not, I'm not, I'm really just stabbing in that area. I'm not doing anything particularly fancy. Okay, and then I'm back into the top of the ridge. And then I'm gonna pick up the stitches all the way down the side. And again, I pick the same sort of place to pick up the stitches along the edge, but I'm not using my bifocals to do it. I'm just, it's more by feel than anything else. And I'm trying to stay in between the little valleys, in the little valleys of my garter ridges. However many stitches you pick up, and I'm I'm beginning to get to the point where I just don't care how many stitches I pick up, which sounds crazy. But if you're if you're spacing them apart like we've been doing, you're not going to have too many stitches. So I don't even really bother to count, but I want to get back to the same number that are on the top of the foot, and so. That's what's gonna happen next. Once I finish picking up my stitches, I've got as many as I can have on the needle right now. Let me get to the very bottom. There's my last stitch. Okay. And I'm going to work across. Oop, got some little tail in there. I'm gonna work across these stitches back to this corner. And Olga wrote to decrease the gusset every third round, unless you make your socks taller. So if you make your socks taller, do the gusset decreases every other round as usual. But if you are sticking with this um, number that she, that she wrote, then make your, your decreases every third round. And if you stripe a little bit, that can help you count or you need to count your rows. So once you've finished picking up the last of the stitches along the, the heel flap, she tells you to knit across all of the heel stitches.
and to knit across the top of the sock. So actually we start our decreases after we get back to this side. So we're gonna have knitted the top of the sock before we start doing our decreases. So this, we've picked up stitches, that was the first round. The second round is just knit. And when we get across the top of the sock and we're ready to go down the gusset on the far side, that's where we're gonna start our decreases. And then we need to keep track and do them either every other round if we've added some rows or every third round. And this is the point where if you wanted to, you could add a different color. So you could get to the end of this sock. And again, we were talking about eking out yarn if you wanted to. So there's all of my gusset stitches and all of my heel stitches on this side. So if I was using double points, I would be splitting this between two needles. I'm ready to start across the top. And if I wanted to, I could do this in a contrast color. So I'm going to pull out a contrast color. Oops. Look, yarn barf. There it is. There's the end. So I could knit this across in the contrast color. Leaving my, my main color attached right there. And this is just for those little highlight stripes that are on. These are for these stripes here. And to my eye, it looks like they're alternated one row each. You could do two rows, you could do one row. You could do as many contrast colors. Ah. My husband just brought me a glass of wine and scared me. <laughs> Take the good with the bad. Take the good with the bad. That's that's what we've always done, sweetie. He also took the puppy. Hi, puppy. Oh. Well, so you again. The striping here is optional. I just want to have extra striping, partly because I, I don't know how much yarn I have. <laughs> so I feel like the more contrast I use, the better. <laughs> and then the decreases are worked the first two stitches and the last two stitches of the gusset side. So the first two stitches are at the end of this needle and the last two stitches are before I get to this needle again. So you always want to maintain the top needle, the, the top of the foot stitches are always going to stay the same. They're always going to be this number, half of the, the original. And then you're going to make your decrease right at the top, so there's no selvage stitch here. There's no extra stitch before you do your decrease. You're gonna do your SSK right here. So it's gonna be slip one, slip one, put the needle, the left needle into the front of those two slip stitches, work them together as one. When that happens, it's hard to see it. I'm gonna just draw it really quickly for you. When you make an SSK, it looks like you have a stitch. Can you see that? One stitch with another stitch next to it. So it looks like two stitches together with one stitch coming out of them. Okay. 
If you look at it very closely, you'll see, and this one's striped, so I've got two green stitches leaning to the left with one pink stitch coming out of it. If you are coming around and this is what you see when you're ready to work it, you've already done a decrease in this row. You would be doing another decrease if you worked it in this row. So if you work that without a decrease, there will be two stitches on top of it. This is when you work the decrease next. If you're doing the longer version, if you're doing the version as written, this it's the third one that you would make the decrease in. So when you look at your stitches and you're ready to do the next decrease, the double stitch should be three down if you're doing the pattern as written or two down if you've lengthened it a little bit. So that's, I think, um, a helpful little icon to have in your mind because sometimes when you're looking at stitches, it's like, when, when do I do my decrease? And so we end up having an uneven number of decreases. And I think if you can look and sort of recognize that little teepee at the bottom and the one stitch coming out of it, and then, so this next round, I wouldn't want to work a decrease, but I would want to work a decrease in the round after that or the round after that. Okay, that is what I came to show you tonight. Thank you very much for your patience while I let the dog out. And <laughs> I hope everybody has a great holiday. Um, does anybody have any questions? So we will pick up this sock from the ribbed part, which is coming up after the gusset decreases. So we will pick up the sock at the foot end arch in December. I believe it's the Monday before the Christmas, Christmas week. Um, and we should have a lineup of sock club for next year we're going to use the same format of one every two months and meeting at least once a month i think our project monday format is going to change a little bit we're not going to repeat some of the things we've done but we will be doing sock club again okay any questions at all where did I go? Oh, I'm still in. I'm like, why can't I see me? I'm still on the camera. I hope you enjoy making these. I hope you get to. Um, one of the things that teaching the sock class has taught me is that if you start, like if you got through with the cuff and this part of your sock, you get past the contrast stripes here, you could go and start the cuff of the other one and have that ready, you know. So I do recommend um, working two at a time, even if you're doing it on alternating pairs of needles. And then you'll be really in a good place to finish these socks before the end of the year. Have a great week, everybody. And I hope I see you all next month. You too, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank, Thank you. you. You're welcome. Thanks. Good night. Good night.